Hi, I'm Dr. Molly with Your Goals Physical Therapy. Are you a runner and you are currently stuck in a boot or maybe you've been out of the boot for a little bit, but either way, you went from boot and now you wanna know how you're gonna get back to running. That is the big million dollar question. How do I go from a walking boot to running? Well, this video is gonna be perfect for you. I help athletes all the time get from their surgery back to the activities that they love. And so we're gonna talk about a lot of the anxieties and the things that go along with the surgery um, and how to heal and what normal healing is and then what the steps are to get you from the first part of healing where your bone or your ligament is getting healed up by your body all the way back to running. All right, so let's get started. First, walking boots are amazing for many, many things. Not comfort, not style. Those are not what they're wonderful for. They are wonderful at helping you off weight your bone or your ligaments to allow them time to heal. It makes it to where your muscles do not have to do a whole lot of work so they're not pulling on a bone in case of a fracture and they are allowing that ligament whether it was surgically repaired or it was um, overstretched and it just needed time to get sh to shrink up and to be stable again. So that's what that walking boot is for. And so many times when you're coming out of a walking boot, you've been dealing with an orthopedic surgeon and they will send you home with maybe some exercises you can do on a sheet of paper um, you or and, and some general guidelines on like what you should and shouldn't do. And then the day comes where they tell you, you get to get out of that boot and you're like, but what does that really mean? Do I just get to throw the boot away? Do I have to keep it? Do I wear it some of the time, not all the time? And for some people, they don't really get a whole lot of answers from the, the orthopedic surgeon. And that's not to pick on anybody, but that just seems to be what, um, what I deal with is that they don't give very specific question, um, answers to those questions. And so they're handed the sheet of paper and they're told that they can resume normal activities and they can go about their day. Ah. And when you walk out, you're so excited that they told you you can let go of that boot. You completely forgot to ask all of those questions. Happens to all of us. So, <laughs> so now, you're stuck at your house by yourself trying to figure out how you get back to running because the moment they told you that you could get out of that boot, you had images of walking in the park, getting back to your light jogging, just going about how you were before you got stuck in that boot. And then the reality strikes and you take the boot off and you stand and you're like, holy biscuits, it's uncomfortable to stand. It's really uncomfortable to walk. Why on earth do I have a limp? Why does my foot swell all the time? How much pain is okay? He told me I could walk. How far can I actually walk? Is it just around my house? Is it at the park? Do I have to do it on treadmill? I have all these questions and I have no idea where to get these answers. And the internet is just overloaded with information. <laughs> Hence my video. Anyway, um, so, it is, it's very confusing. And when you've come out of a walking boot and everything is healed, as far as the surgeon's concerned, you get surgeon or your orthopedic, whether you had a surgery or you didn't, just for clarification. Um, oftentimes when you're getting a boot, you are dealing with some form of orthopedic person and they've, they've released you. And what that means is that the tissue that was damaged, whether that was your bone, a ligament, whether you had screws put in, wh whatever the reason for the walking boot, all of that has been resolved and so if you aren't told to go someplace else, a lot of people get very confused. Like you're not suggested to go to a specialist, right? Then you get very confused as to like how, like what do you do first to make your ankle better? Because it's stiff, it still swells, it's still uncomfortable. It's not the original ankle I had before I had the injury. This is still uncomfortable and still to a certain point injured right, as far as we're thinking, because not injured is being able to do all the things that we want to do. And that is where seeing a specialist like myself is important, whether the orthopedic surgeon or the orthopedic doctor suggested that or not, it is by far easier to navigate this whole process with somebody in your corner. Somebody who can go over and explain to you 
the reason that you have pain in the morning is because you're not moving during the whole, you know, the whole night and we naturally collect fluid in the in throughout the evening and by not moving we're not pumping that fluid out of all the little joints in your feet and your ankle and so that fluid just collects there and so the first couple steps are very very uncomfortable because you're trying to push all that fluid out and it doesn't move as fast as we'd like it to so a quick trick for that is before you get up in the morning point and bend your toes Right? Wouldn't that have been helpful to know? <laughs> so, so, but if just by moving your ankles and twisting them around before that first step, it can take a lot of that uncomfortableness away. Then the question becomes like, how do I get rid of this limp? And why is my foot swelling all the time? Do I still need to be wearing the boot? That is another question that is harder to answer when somebody is not in front of you just because there can be lots of reasons things are swelling and a certain amount of swelling is normal but after a certain point, then there is something that you need to be paying attention to. And so it's just very hard to give a clear answer for what is acceptable amounts of swelling and what is an acceptable amount of pain um, without seeing somebody. And these are, again, this is my, my pitch, right? This is why seeing a specialist, this is what I do as I help people navigate through all of this complexity so that they have more confidence moving. Reality is that runners, we are an interesting breed we will push through pain. And that is the only way that anybody ever runs a marathon is by being able to ignore a certain amount of pain. But there's a caveat to that because if you've been injured, sometimes it's really hard to get back on that horse. And so as much as you may want to do something, you can be dramatically afraid that you're gonna re-injure yourself. And so I see runners in these very two dichotomies where they're either willing to push themselves so far and then some that are very hesitant because they are very nervous that they're going to re-injure themselves and so both of those can be actually detrimental for very different reasons so if you take the runner that is willing to just push past pain they very much likely could end up hurting themselves so we'll just pretend like it was a bone fracture um, actually it doesn't even matter if it was a ligament and you you're in a boot and you're like, I'm just gonna push past all this discomfort because I know that it's just weakness, it's just range of motion, and if I just push, it'll, it'll go through. That muscle, that bone, those ligaments have not been used. And so even though you had the strength four, six, or longer weeks ago, that strength has to be rebuilt up. And that, those, that range of motion needs to get built back up. And so, just because you had it before the injury doesn't mean that that bone currently is strong enough to tolerate that or that ligament is strong enough to withstand the forces of you getting back to running. And there are very clear steps that you can take that will allow you to know that you can safely get back into running. Um, but again, that's hard to do on your own. It's very hard to self-diagnose. And then on the other side, if you're afraid to move because everything hurts and you're just really nervous that you're gonna hurt yourself, the longer you go without moving that ankle and that joint, the harder it is to get the range of motion back. Strength comes back when you start moving. And so it, it just that just means that you're delaying that process. But range of motion can really be hard to get back the longer you don't have it. It takes a lot more effort, a lot more tenacity to regain range of motion just talk to anybody who considers themselves stiff. <laughs> they can stretch all day, every day, and they feel like they get just a little bit of an inch, they take a day off, and they feel like they lost it. And to, to a certain extent, there is a lot of um, truth to that, especially after an injury where they're still swelling, because that swelling can kind of eat away any kind of range of motion. So knowing and understanding how to move, what to move, what's acceptable, um, can be very empowering for somebody who's having a whole lot of anxiety related to moving which makes a whole lot of sense and some people may not know this but professional athletes can have that same anxiety to get back on the field afraid that they can hurt themselves again a lot of people after an acl injury will never get back to playing any kind of basketball soccer or football because they can they just can't get past being afraid that their knee will be injured again so it's a very real thing and that is where having somebody in your corner somebody who does this every day who's seen it on multiple people and multiple situations that can 
go through and look at how you are and your ankle, your situation, and know where you are now, where you wanna go, and be able to give you guidelines and guardrails on how to get there safely. So if that is the type of care that you're looking for, I'm gonna leave a link below. I'm gonna leave a couple of them. So the first one that I'm gonna leave is asking about cost and availability. So if you know that this is really what you want and you're ready, then just fill out that quick little form that says cost and availability. My office will get back to you and we'll answer those questions and get you scheduled. If you have a couple of questions and you're not quite sure how working with a specialist would work and you'd prefer to get on a call with me to ask all of those questions, um, I would be happy to get on a call and we can talk about what's happening specifically with you and how, um, how it is that I would be able to help you get back to running after you get out of this walking boot. And with that, I will leave a talk to a PT link. So there'll be a little button, you'll fill out a form and we'll set up a time uh, to talk based on how you fill out that form. So I hope that this information um, is helpful and I hope that you guys are having a great day until I have the chance to talk to you.